drivers think they own the road. Look at that fender. They'll pay for that fender. Pay for it? I saw what happened. We don't pay you a nickel. That's right. You own this truck, don't you? Yes, it's our truck, but we're not paying you one red centavo. I got witnesses. I can get twice as many witnesses. In the first place, you got no right parking here. In the second place, you didn't stick your hand out. We can sue you. That's right. You pay me for my fender. Pay the man. Who are you? I never saw you before. What are you doing driving one of our trucks? Well, your flagstaff office needed a driver in a hurry. They didn't tell me this truck here had no brakes. So I'll pay the man for his damages. We pay nothing. That's right. Now, wait a minute. I get $15 for this run. I'll take it now. See the cashier in the morning. I'll take it now. Shot. Bar whiskey? How is it? Bar whiskey. Bar whiskey. Oh, that's awful. Why drink it? Do you like to clean glasses? I don't mind. illegal in this state. So we're spitting on the floor. Can anybody go up there? Nope. Only a select group. Who do I have to know? It's not who you know, it's what you can show. Uh -huh. What's it worth? It's a 21 jewel movement. The case happens to be pure gold. Ten dollars. It's worth 60, I'll take 15. That's him, officer. That's him, the one sitting at the bar. What's your name? Lambert. Now, what's the trouble? Your full name. Michael Lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T. Let's have your driver's license. This expired three months ago. That's right. Well, I, uh, I've been out of the country. Driving trucks? There's nothing wrong with driving trucks, but it's not my business. So it seems. I just wanted to get down into this town. Why? Do you know anybody here? No. I was looking for a job. I'm a mining engineer. Now, suppose you tell me. What's the trouble? Well, let the judge tell you. I wouldn't have time to read all the charges against you. Let's go. Come on, let's go. All right, all right. driving, driving through a boulevard stop, 
Driving without a license. Plead guilty? Yes, sir. It's not as simple as all that, though. Fifty dollars or ten days. Pay the clerk. I haven't got fifty dollars. That's the man that ought to be fined. What man, Eppin? Uh, the trucking foreman there. He knows that truck had no brakes. What about that? Your Honor, they all have excuses when they break the law. No man works for our outfit unless he agrees to full responsibility for any traffic violations. We gotta do that, Judge, or them drivers would bankrupt the company. Did you agree to this? I suppose so. I needed the money. Then they hand me a truck without any brakes. I fought that truck for seven hours coming down into this cheap town. Fifty dollars or ten days? I told you I haven't got it. Ten days. It's all right. Ten days is all I want of this town. I'll pay the fine. For this man? Yes. Pay the clerk. Case is closed. You're free to go. Ma'am. Always the same. Always the same. Same old pair. Women and... Hey. And you know whose fault it is? The woman. No, it's, it's mine. But not anymore. I'm gonna settle down and I'm gonna be a success. Success, that's me. Sure, I know. Yeah. Well, this is the payoff. Bailed out by a woman. She's waiting for you. Oh, well, let her wait. I'm through with all that. I'm gonna settle down. I'm gonna make good. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna make good. I'm gonna make good. That's right. Make good. That's right. I'm gonna make good. <laughs> It isn't the money, Julio. Uh, because we can stretch and give you a little more. No, I'm just tired and I want to quit. Is closed? Yes. Well, when a girl like you wants something, she's going to get it. Come on, Mike. Come on. Pretty girl. You're beautiful, Paula. Yes, Mike.
I found him. What does he look like? Same height as you. Same build. And his face? Not like you at all. Well, doesn't matter. We'll fix that. Are you upset? No. Excited? A little. Oh, but you, darling, you must be exhausted. All evening on your feet in that crowded, smoky place. I shouldn't have let you do it. You couldn't do it, and it had to be done. Five weeks of looking, waiting, and looking. Sometimes I felt it wasn't worth it. Not even for a quarter of a million dollars. If it weren't for this place, to come here in my free time and relax and feel like a human being, I don't know what I would have done. Paula, you think it was wise to quit? Quit the La Paloma? Yeah. Why not? We're ready. Yeah, that's true. Better to quit now than disappear without a word. This way, it's finished. You sure he's the man? Of course. And he knows no one in town, no relatives, no connections? No one but me. I've got to make sure he doesn't make any other friends. I'll make sure. Steve, it's wonderful luck. He's very much like you. Really? Not really. You remember the day I met you? That first day, two years ago almost. How could I forget? I was modeling furs for a living. You were standing on the steps being photographed and that Chicago wind was blowing through your hair. You looked like an angel in furs. Someone else's furs. You were beautiful. Steve. Do you have the card for the safety deposit box? Oh, of course. It's all filled out. You'll just sign it. What about the keys? The keys? To the safety deposit box. Oh, I've got them. I'll have to keep them with me. In case anything goes wrong, I can put the money back in a hurry. Steve. Yes? How soon? Week, four days, three days. I have a lot of things to take care of. The sooner the better. Yes. It's late. Then better go. Turn the car around. I'll be right down. Don't worry. I'm sure it'll work. It has to work.
Why, Beth, you still up? I couldn't sleep. What's the matter, Beth? All right, so I've stayed out all night again. Would you like an accounting? I didn't ask you where you've been. I don't particularly want to know. It's your own business. Of course, dear. And if I did tell you, I'm sure you'd take it for granted I was lying. Please, Stephen, please. I'm not trying to make a scene. Don't you think it's time we thrashed this out like two sane people? Yes, yes, I know, Beth. You're going to say all the things you've been saying for weeks now. Something's been happening to us. Hasn't it? I've told you repeatedly you imagine all these things. Stephen, no woman imagines it when she ceases to feel like a wife. And now what are you talking about? About the way you avoid the issue. You have a quaint and childish way of admitting all your sins. I'm not asking you to admit them. I'm asking you to do something about them. I'm sorry, Beth, but I'm a little too old to change. I'm not a hypocrite. No, I suppose you're not. It's a strange thing. We married nine years. I still don't know exactly what you are. I'm exactly what you wanted me to be. I'm a respected vice president of the respected Empire Trust and Savings Bank. All thanks to you, Beth. All that I am and hope to be, I owe to my angel wife. You talk as though you didn't want it. On the contrary, it's exactly what I do want. My father described you pretty accurately before we were married. An opportunist? He was quite right, Beth. But even he admitted I was an intelligent one. I had a good education and made no use of it. I had nice manners and a fine disposition. So you married me and made me respectable. You wanted to know what I am. I told you. Now, do whatever you like about it. That's what telling me what I bought and paid for. Again. Clock right up there. Be 
you on duty last night? Yep. You see me come in? Yep. How'd I get here? Lady brought you in. Lady? What lady? Didn't say. Just brought you in. How much for the room? We collect in advance. Who'd you collect from me? No. The lady. The lady. Mm -hmm. Hey. Bill's over there. Thanks. Where can I get some coffee around here? Across the street, down about a block. Put your sample down there. I have no sample. You opening up any new mines? Well, might be. Do every once in a while. Well, I'm... I'm a mining engineer. Is that so? Got a regular degree? Sure I have. Oh, I don't want to see your credentials. I ain't going to hire you. Oh. Yeah. Do you know anybody who might? I'm a pretty fair man in my field. Had experience? Plenty. Tell you what, son. There was a man came in here yesterday with a sample that looked pretty good. Assayed pretty good, too. Got the report all ready for him. Yeah, what is it? Well, I'm not supposed to say. Silver. And assay's pretty high, too. Hmm. That's so. Might be able to use you. If I were you, I'd stick around. Awful nice fellow, too. Old Codger's been trying and trying. Looks pretty good, eh? Yeah, you sit right down there and wait for this fellow. Should be in right about now. Thanks a lot for the tip. I'll wait. Of course, I wouldn't take a job like that no matter what they paid me. Packing up them trails and no trails at all. Log bunkhouse, cold at night and bitter cold in the day. Live off beans and coffee. Boil them in the same pot, most likely. Hello, Candy. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Want anything special? Now, don't kid me, Sandy. Haven't you got that assay for me or not? Well, might have it. Might have it. Let's see. Got to put it in somewhere. Yeah, come on, hurry it up, hurry it up. Oh, yeah. Here it is. I don't know. Am I reading right? Regular assay, according to form. It looks good. It is good. I knew I had something. I was dead sure of it. Look, Sandy, don't that say? 121 ounces per ton. That's well, right. Maybe I struck her this time. Maybe I struck her. <laughs> they said it was all worked out. But, gee, Sandy, I'm going to open up that mine in two weeks. You see if I don't. Jeff, want a man to work with you? Who? You? Me, <laughs> not me, you old <laughs> fool. A mining engineer, college graduate. Hmm? Might be a good man for you. Hey, engineer. Yeah? This is the miner I was telling you about. How are you? Hey, don't I know you? Sure, you're the fella ran into my car yesterday. That's right. <laughs> Glad to see you. Sandy, this here's an honest man. What'd I tell you? <laughs> so you're a mining engineer, huh? Well, I'm a lot better at that than I am at driving trucks. Aren't you? <laughs> He's a good man. Well, think you can use me? Well, come on, man. Come on, let's celebrate first. Yeah, well, I'd do better with something a little more solid in here. It's all right with you. Well, sure. Gosh, I'm glad I met you this way. So long, Sandy. Red Mountain. Here. Now, here's the old shaft. The tunnel heads right up this way. Now, right here is where the vein ran out. They thought. <laughs> they 
missed it by just that far. And pretty? Man, you should see it. Well, what's the condition of the tunnel? Not bad. Timber's in pretty good shape. Water nearby? Yeah, yeah, we got a mountain stream right up here. It's solid in the winter, dry in the summer, and flooded in the spring. Far from here? <laughs> Man, it's 10,000 up and 50 miles from the nearest house. Does that bother you any? Oh, no. That's good. Man, when we get going, by gee, I could buy myself a new hat. This one's been snowed on, spit on, chewed on mountain squirrels. <laughs> Brought you luck, though. Hmm? Not for the last three years, then. By gee, we got her now. But we can cut 500 a day out of that vein. Say, I want to sign a contract with you. Whatever you say. 10% of all the silver you can cut out of that mountain. Is that fair enough? Fair? That's 10% more than I figured on. All I wanted was a job. Yeah, that's the way I want it. It's your money. I'll get it out of you. <laughs> You'll work all the harder. Now, you go ahead and finish your breakfast. I'm going to go buy a new hat and get to that Empire Bank before noon. Are you on good terms with the bank? With a report like this? Man, this is money. <laughs> it's a deal. Do we go to work? Sure. Good. It's a deal. You pack your shirts and be over at the assay office at 2 o'clock. Right. <laughs> Why, gee, I forgot your name again. Oh, it's uh, Mike Lambert. Jeff Cunningham. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Come in. Wow. You didn't call, so I just dropped in to see if you were all right. <laughs> you were in a bad way last night. Yeah? You act as though you wish I hadn't come. Mm, no, no. Oh, I just got a lot of things on my mind, that's all. I noticed that last night. What do you mean? Oh, you kept running away from liquor and women. Or was it a woman? Don't count on anything I said last night. Liquor blanks me out. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Why? You said I was beautiful. I told you I never remember what I do after I've had a couple of drinks. You handle everything just like a man. Going somewhere? Mm-hmm. What are you running away from this time? I got a job out of town. Don't go worrying about your money. You'll get it back. You know I'm not worried about the money. You make more sense when you're drunk. Maybe. You're afraid. Of what? Me. to show you how wrong you are, lady. Paul is the name. I came here to get a job, that's all. Now I got it. Better than that, the owner's cutting me in on 10% of all the silver I can get out of that mine. It's the first break I've had in a long time. Now nobody's gonna support it, not even me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interfere. All right. Forget it. Where's the mine? Uh, about 50 miles from here. Who owns it? A fellow named Cunningham. When do you leave? This afternoon, 2 o'clock, if there's no hitch. How could there be a hitch? You said it was all set. No, well, not in my deal. I mean the money arrangements. Cunningham's at the Empire Bank now negotiating a loan. You know, it takes dough to get that silver out. I see. You know, I wish you all the luck you deserve, Mike. Thanks. If you ever need another button sewed on, the address is 211 Clark Street. Goodbye, Mike. Good luck. Cunningham. 
Mr. Price, you never sent a truer word. You know, I never thought that hill had anything left in it but rocks. We'll have to send one of our men out tomorrow to look at the property. Well, that suits me fine. Now, what would you estimate the... Oh, excuse me, Cunningham. Yes? Helen Bailey on the phone. I'll call her later. She says it's very important. All right. <clears throat> Hello. Steve, are you alone? No. Then just listen. There's a miner named Cunningham on his way to see you. Or maybe he's there already. Yes. He's offered our man a job. I don't know how he made the connection, but he did. I see. Yes, that's a very sound idea. Thank you. Goodbye. Now, Cunningham, what did you estimate the loan should be? Well, uh, my rough figuring uh, comes to 30000 Uh-huh. How's that sound? Well, frankly, it sounds like far too much. Well, I don't know. I suppose we could scrape through with 5000 less. That's still too much. I don't figure it that way. Cunningham, you realize the bank can't afford to take a gamble on as big a sum as that? Why not? I paid back every red cent I ever borrowed and paid it on time. This bank knows me. No, we can't do business on sentiment, Cunningham. This is not sentiment. Now, here's what I suggest. A short-term note, say, three months. Short-term. For $5,000. What? That wouldn't even pay for the tool shack. What you're doing is turning me down. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Cunningham. I've done business with this bank for 15 years. It's long before you came here, long before you married your money, and long before you ever sat in that chair. This time I'll ever come this way. You give me a lot of greasy talk, and you turn me down. I'm sorry. You're not sorry, but you will be. Good lots of time now. What's wrong? No loan. What what happened? I don't know exactly. That no good vice president of the bank. The deal was all set, and suddenly. I just don't understand it. Well, there's another bank in town, isn't there? Yeah, there is, sure, if they won't touch a mining investment. No, I'll go out of town and see old partner Walt Donovan. He may be able to dig me up a couple of thousand, maybe more. Well, uh, what about what about our deal? Does it still go? Well, sure, man. Sure it does, Mike. But you know how things look. If I'm not back in two or three days, maybe you better get yourself another job. Huh? Okay. Hey, good luck to you, Jeff. You got a new hat out of it anyway, huh? This kind of pretty, ain't it? Someone in particular? Mm -hmm. She quit last night. Good for her. Come in. Mike. Expecting somebody? Certainly not you. I thought you were on your way. I was. Well? Deal fell through. Oh, I'm sorry. So am I. Maybe I shouldn't be. Sit down, Mike. I just left the La Paloma. See anything interesting? Heard you quit your job. I hope it wasn't because you got mixed up in my troubles. Oh, no. I was just tired. You 
You're a strange girl. Working in a two-bit cafe, and yet you look like... Like what? I'm trying to decide. Mike? Yeah? There's a bottle of rye in the kitchen. No, thanks. Sure? I don't need it. What happened? Did you swear off liquor and women? Maybe. The deal meant an awful lot to you, didn't it? So. You don't want to talk about that. Depends on how you tell it. Oh, it's a very short story. Money. How much? More than the bank wanted to risk. What are your plans? I don't know, it depends. Maybe I'll hang around a couple of days, just so I... What? Catch up on things. And then? Vancouver, Alaska. Still running away? Not yet. I can see several good reasons why I should stay. What's happened? Nothing to be alarmed about. It's hardly five o'clock. We've never come here this early. What's the trouble? It's no trouble. It's just that the bank examiners are coming the day after tomorrow. Then there is trouble. No. No, it's quite the usual thing. But when they arrive, they work about two weeks. I don't want the delay. I think it's dangerous. I agree. We can't wait that long. How about your car? Plenty of gas in it? Yes, Steve. All right, we'll leave it here in the garage. It'll only be for the night. Uh, darling, what about the money? You think I'd forget that? Of course not, Steve. But there's so many things. It's in your safe deposit box. All of it? 250000 They'll be searching for that money from here to Los Angeles. And all the while, it'll be right under their noses. In my own bank, in your name. Now, Paula. Under that robe, you'll find a wrench. Now, about your friend Lambert. I'll get him here. But remember, it's your place, not mine. He still thinks I'm a waitress. from beginning to end. That sign, dangerous curve on the right. That's where I stop and where you... I know. Steve. Yes? I'm worried about one thing. What's that? What if they find something to identify him? Well, when there's an accident, there's usually a fire. Suppose there isn't. There will be. There'll be nothing left to identify. And Lambert becomes Price. Yes, Steve. And just end for an embezzler. Let's take a look. First time, I really believe it's going to happen. Tomorrow night.
tomorrow night. open? Yep. That's yours for ten bucks. It's the same watch. That still runs. Is it a deal? Okay. Drink? No. A nine. One nine. Come on, the winner. Your bets, son, early gentlemen, coming right out. Perhaps 7 Eleven. A seven. Four, the pointer's four. Hard way, Joe. Ten he comes. Come back, sort of butt in the field now. A four. Lose seven, I lost it. Next player, come down early now. They're coming right out for number. Win seven, seven owner, good beginner. Shoot it. Win seven, you win some more. Coming right out for number now. Shoot it. Win you eleven, uh, another winner. I'll take the money. What, you quit? You plenty hot. Don't be loco. Right out for number. Perhaps seven eleven. I'll buy that watch back for 20 bucks. Come on, come on. Expecting me? Of course. Feel so good. What's the matter? I came to pay off my debt. Forty, fifty, that's for the fine. Three dollars for room number seven. Five dollars you gave me for whatever the five dollars is for. And here, that's for your trouble. Mike, you're insulting. Oh, I couldn't insult you. That wouldn't be possible. You're drunk. I wish I were. Now, oh, this is beginning to make sense. A waitress that doesn't look like a waitress. Quitting her job. Why? Because she's tired? <laughs> Expensive perfume. Plenty of money, money to throw away on a guy like me. Pay his fine, get him a room. What for, a laugh? Are you through? Yeah, I'm through. Now I'm getting out of here. You're getting out of here. But first you're going to tell me. I got nothing to tell you. What's the matter with you? I was standing at the corner of Fifth and Clark Street about an hour ago. You fool. A car stopped at the curb. Do you know who that was? I don't want to know. You've got to know. It was Price who happens to be vice president of the Empire Bank. Congratulations. I didn't go for my sake. I went for yours. That's great. Doesn't the Cunningham deal me anything to you anymore? Well, what about it? I persuaded Price to reconsider the loan. He's going with us tomorrow to look at Cunningham's property. You understand, Mike, you've got the deal. Yeah? You don't have to believe it. You have the appointment. See for yourself. 
What did you do to persuade him? What's the difference now? A lot of difference. I don't want a woman fronting for me. I wanted you to get the job. I couldn't let you drift away. Pick up the money, Mike. How does a, a waitress at the La Paloma come to know the vice president of a bank? A lot of people come to La Paloma. So I've noticed. One way or another, a smart girl gets to know in which closet they keep the family skeleton. And when she rattles that skeleton, bingo. Where's the skeleton in the Price family? Mrs. Price? But it's a long story. You going to stay to hear it? Where are your cigarettes? Same place as they were last night. Have you finished those letters? No, Mr. Price. You see those estimates. Never mind. I'll sign them tomorrow. I'm driving out to look at the Cunningham holdings. Cancel all my appointments for today. Yes, Mr. Price. Oh, uh, I want to see the examiners when they arrive first thing in the morning. Been in our city long, Mr. Lambert? Well, a couple of days. Say, aren't you going to have one of your engineers look the place over? A banker, Mr. Lambert, has to know a little about most everything. I happen to have a mining degree. Good enough. Suppose we take these samples back and have another assay run on them, just for confirmation. Suit yourself. It'll give us a clearer picture. All right. Just a second, I'll get something to carry them in. Everything working out, Mr. Price? I imagine so. Must seem a boring trip. On the contrary. I had to dump out Cunningham's laundry, but he won't mind. You know, Mr. Lambert, I think I may have been too hasty yesterday. Cunningham, of course, was a little rude. I got angry, naturally. Oh, I don't think Cunningham meant to be. Well, it looks good to me. In fact, I think we stand to make a little money. Well, that calls for a celebration. Not a bad idea. Where would you like to stop? I don't know this section at all. I tell you what, we might turn off to my place. I've got a little shack up there. I'm sure we can find the fixings. I need something to warm me up. And personally, I'm awfully curious. Well, one drink won't shorten a man's life appreciably, now will it? Oh, what a lovely place. Yeah, it's quite a shack. Come on in. Make yourselves comfortable. Lambert? Let me take your hat. Thanks. Ah. Now, I'll fix some drinks. Wonderful. How would you like it, Miss Craig? Water? Soda? Some sherry? Sherry. Whiskey, Lambert? All right. Just a short one, though. You know, Cunningham's gonna be mighty happy when he hears about it. Yes, I think we can do business. Well, here's luck. And a little extra. To all of us. Is anyone else hungry? I'm famished. 
Let's go. There ought to be a diner along the road somewhere. Nonsense. I have all the staples in the refrigerator. Eggs, bacon, the usual things. And perhaps Miss Craig would... Fine. Where's the frying pan? Right out here. Your coat? Where can I wash my hands? Right at the head of the stairs. So good. Store for time. Still too early. Find everything, Lambert? Yeah. What's got into you? Why are you drinking? To you. Won't you join us in the kitchen, Lambert? I like it better out here. Something's the matter with him. I know. He saw your robe upstairs. My robe? He's in love with it. What'll we do? Let him drink. It'll make it that much easier. He's passed out. You'll have to carry him.
Paula. How do you feel? What happened to me? Don't you remember? No. The only thing I remember is a white robe. Mike. Let's not pretend anymore. No, let's not. I did lie to you about Price. But that's over. That, that's past. That was before I... Before what? Before I met you. Don't you see, Mike? Price never meant... I don't care what he meant to you. I'm pulling out of this. Mike. Have you seen this? Here he was alone in his car. Have you been to the police? If the accident. We can't go to the police. Why not? It wasn't that kind of an accident. What do you mean? You killed him, Mike. Don't you remember? I. Yes. Oh, no. You're out of your mind. I tried to stop you. You were drunk. You accused him of making advances. When he called off the deal, you got angry and hit him. He fell against the fireplace, hitting his head. I killed him? No. Just an accident. Where are you going? To the police. You can't. He's dead. And as far as everyone is concerned, it was an accident. Listen to me. If you go to the police, you'll hang. You came into this town a drifter, and they'll never believe that you didn't mean to kill him. Does it matter? I'll hang, too. I helped to cover for you, to make it look like an accident. And I thought I had something this time. Go pack your things. We're going to leave town tomorrow. I'm right back where I started. Nowhere. Paper, mister? Paper. Auto accident proved murder. How do they know it was murder? That's so right here in the paper. A blow in the back of the head with blunt instrument causing severe cerebral hemorrhage. Well, that's awful. Have they got the murderer? Oh, they got him all right. Five minutes, that's 
that's all. How are you, Jeff? Bad. How would you feel with a charge like this against you? Mike, you know I didn't do it. I couldn't kill anybody. I didn't like him, but I wouldn't kill him. Oh, well, take it easy, Jeff. Of course you didn't do it. And they got to prove it before they can convict you. Well, I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to fly off the handle. I'm in a tough spot. Well, you have your alibi. You went out to see your friend Donovan. That's just it. He wasn't there. I stayed in his shack overnight, and when he didn't show up the next day, I came on back to town. Well, they claim that you, you threatened Price. I did no such thing. I went to see him about the loan. First he says, yes, Cunningham, fine, Cunningham. I think the deal's all set. And uh, we were interrupted, and he talked on the phone, and when he got through, he was cold, wouldn't hear of the deal. He offered me 5000 I didn't threaten him. But I told him off and walked out. Sit down. I know you didn't do it. Yeah, sure. You say my laundry bag was in the wrecked car. Mike, I swear I don't know how he got it. I wasn't with him. Jeff. I was the last man with Price. You? Yeah, we drove up to the mine. He changed his mind about your deal. Wanted to go through with it? Then he backed out again. That's when I may have killed him. Don't you know? No. No, I don't. I, I had a few drinks. I... Mike, you didn't murder anybody no more than me. I don't know. There's something loco about this man, Price. He changed his mind, then he changed it again. I don't get it. He wasn't crazy, not Price. Now, wait a minute, Jeff. You say that when you went into his office, he got a phone call? That's right, he did. Well, what'd he say? Oh, nothing, just yes, no, yes, no. Yeah, yeah, well, who's he talking to? I didn't pay any attention. Just a phone call, none of my business. Hey, maybe that's something. Maybe it's nothing, but it's all we got. Police ought to know. No, they'd only throw me in jail. Time's up. Look, Jeff, I think I have an idea who might have done it. But what I don't know is why. I need time to find out. But I promise you, you're not going to be in here more than 24 hours. Well, another day it won't make no difference. Mike, don't get in no trouble on account of me. It's all right, Jeff. I'm looking for Mr. Price's secretary. Who? Mr. Price's secretary. Well, she's not here. I know that. What's her name? I don't know her name. What do you want to know for? Well, I gotta see her. I'm a, I'm a reporter. Can you find out? See Miss Woodworth. She's retired for the night. Wait, is she the young lady that worked for Mr. Price? I'm her husband. What do you want with her? I'm a reporter for the Chronicle. Look, brother, every cop in town's been questioning my wife. The phone's been ringing all day long. They talk to her, but she doesn't know what she's saying. Why don't you give her a break and come back tomorrow? Mister, this is important. There's a man in jail. He'll be in jail tomorrow, too. It may mean this man's life, and all I want is one minute of Mrs. Woodworth's time. Let him come in, Jack. Ms. Woodworth, I'll be very brief. It's about Jeff Cunningham. You say you overheard a quarrel. That's right. He was shouting insults at Mr. Price. Well, while Cunningham was in Mr. Price's office, Mr. Price got a phone call, didn't he? He had a dozen calls. Didn't you ring Mr. Price on the interphone while Cunningham was there? 
Yes, I did. Is that important? Well, it may prove vital. Who was it who called? Well, let me think. Try to remember. You don't have to answer him if you don't want to. He's not the police. It's my job. Look, was it a man or a woman who called? Oh, it was a woman. What was her name? Try to think. I've got to know. Why? What's the hurry? I've got to make the morning edition. Look, your wife's trying to cooperate. Why shouldn't you? Whittier, Nelson, Carlson. Barclay. Gee, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Never sent a reporter, is that it? Just what I figured. No, you send for the police. I'll hold him here. Yeah, be a pleasure. Oh, I know, of course. Helen Bailey. That's the name, Helen Bailey. Did you ever see her? No, but she called three or four times a week. Helen Bailey, of course. Thanks. You've helped a lot. How about a cup of coffee before you leave? Oh, no, thanks. I'm in a hurry. No need to hurry. The Chronicle has no morning edition. Never did. Sit down. Sorry. Frantic all night worrying about you. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Thinking. Oh, don't. Don't think about it. There's nothing we can do. We'll leave this town in a couple of hours. I'll fix you some coffee. I went to see Cunningham yesterday. He's in a bad spot. Oh, he'll get out of it. After all, he is innocent. Proving it is something else. There's nothing you can do. I can confess. Oh, no, Mike, I can't let you. We've got to think of us. Paula. Yes, darling? You know this town pretty well. Some. Do you know a woman named Helen Bailey? No. No, I don't recall the name.
Why do you ask about her? Who? Helen Bailey. No reason, except that she was a friend of Price's. How do you know? It was in the paper this morning. Price's secretary talked to Miss Bailey several times, but claimed she never saw her. Darling, I have to go to the La Paloma and pick up my last check. We'll need every cent of the money. Mike, I'm sorry. I'll get another. You run along. I'll be right back. I don't run away again. I won't. You'd let me go on believing that I killed him. I had to hold you. You killed him. For that. It was either Price or you. He wanted to kill you and let you burn. So they'd think it was him. It would have hurt less that way. I couldn't tell you before, Mike. I was afraid I'd lose you. I didn't care what you were or what you did before we met. Listen to me. We met by luck. We had a few hours. We belonged to each other, Mike. You know that. Sure. I wanted it that way more than anything in the world. But it's no good, Paula. Mike. Mike, listen to me. We can go away. Anywhere. All that money's ours. We can do anything we want.
What about Cunningham? Would you let him die for something he didn't do? We could get him a good lawyer. It's no good, Paula. I can't let this go. I waited too long, Mike. You don't know what it is to wear someone else's clothes. To have to smile when you don't want to. Oh, Mike, if I'd only known you before I met Price. Then this is goodbye, Mike. get a big reward for this. You keep it. <laughs> 